Hello and welcome to another edition of The Complete Works. I am your host, Doug Hess. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we do here on The Complete Works. Is We, just as our uh, title says, The Complete Works, we are looking at the complete works of a particular actor, actress, uh, director, composer, and we're looking at their film history, one film at a time on this podcast. And we're in the process of going through uh, the film career of Nicolas Cage. And on this edition of The Complete Works, we're going to be looking at the USS Indianapolis Men of Courage, starring Nicolas Cage. And that was released back in 2016. Um, And so that's what we're going to be talking about this edition of The Complete Works. If you'd like to find more about The Complete Works podcast, you can uh, go to film-book.com. Uh, by using the search term "the complete works," you can also email us at podcast at film dash book dot com. Again, that's podcast at film dash book dot com. Uh, in the subject line, uh, you can put in there the complete works. You can put in one of the uh, titles that we are um, talking about this week is the USS Indianapolis. Men of Courage, sorry, Nicholas Cage. And if you like what you hear, we would strongly encourage you to hit the uh, subscribe button so it can be delivered every week um, to you and you don't have to go out there and search it. Uh, Like I said, uh, this week we're talking about the USS Indianapolis. Um, Now, what's really interesting about this particular film of the USS Indianapolis, Men of Courage, um, is this film is loosely based on a true story. And what I mean by loosely based on a true story or largely based on a true story, maybe I can say it that way, is the fact that, um, and really not a bad thing, but as you know, you might be able to um, um, uh, take in uh, consideration that a lot of times Hollywood likes to add a twist or a little story. So they're taking a factual event uh, and then kind of adding a little bit to it. And that is what the USS Indianapolis Men of Courage um, basically does. It's taking a, a, a factual situation, which we'll get into here in just a few minutes, and then kind of adding Hollywood's angle to it, adding a love story, etc., to it uh, in terms of that. But um, USS Indianapolis uh, Men of Courage... Um, couple things to to keep in in mind. Uh, The release date was on October the 14th, 2016. And like I said, it's starring Nicolas Cage uh, in this film. The other thing is they had a budget of approximately $40 million. Unfortunately, at the box office, it really only did $1.6 million. So it came in as a loss. Uh, If you take a quick look at um, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, it got a 17% based on only 11 reviews. So I, I really don't want to take a lot of consideration of Rotten Tomatoes. I have great respect for them. It's nothing against Rotten Tomatoes. It's just that since there was only really 11 reviews, the average on out of a 10 was about 3.4, 3.5%. Uh, so me, meaning out of 10 people, Three of them actually liked it. The other uh, seven didn't or uh, six and a half really didn't care for the movie uh, in terms of that. The reason I, I believe, and this is just uh, my own personal opinion, why it only had seven, uh, excuse me, 11 reviews, is that um, it was a very historical um, uh, moment talking about the U.S. in Indianapolis. One is I don't think a lot of people uh, really know the story of the USS uh, Indianapolis. I think there are some historical uh, um, gurus out there that would, would understand that. But overall, uh, again, that was 72 years ago during World War II um, that some people just kind of have forgotten the story. Unfortunately, about the US, USS Indianapolis, so it probably didn't have the draw that other films would have had. Again, not taking anything away from the story, not taking away anything from Nicolas Cage, it's just that it probably didn't find that niche, per se, if I can use it that way. Now, in my own personal opinion, to me, the USS Indianapolis became famous, obviously, or infamous, in its own right of the terrible situation that happened to those 
uh, men that was on the USS Indianapolis uh, and basically spent five days in shark-infected waters. Uh, there was a little over uh, um, 1,100 men that were on uh, the ship uh, that was uh, uh, torpedoed by the Japanese and a little over um, 1,197 uh, men were aboard the ship and only 317 actually survived uh, that torturous five days floating in the Pacific Ocean waiting for help. But we'll get into that in just a few minutes. I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole with this, with the plot. Um, as we usually do, I like to tell uh, a couple quick stories prior to uh, um, jumping into the plot of, of the movie. In my personal opinion, what made uh, the USS Indianapolis... Um, um, some people take notice was that the scene in Jaws, which was directed by Steven Spielberg, and that was back in the 70s, and there was a scene where um, the fisherman Quentin, played by Robert Shaw, had an infamous monologue recounting the tragedy that happened with the USS uh, Indianapolis and in the film Jaws, he tells the story as because he was one of the 317 uh, survivors in terms of that. What was really interesting is for Jaws 2, if you remember Jaws 2, uh, that Steven Spielberg actually contemplated making Jaws 2 um, really about the USS Indianapolis. And what was uh, really interesting is Universal Studios came to Spielberg uh, desperately wanting a follow-up to the movie Jaws, which was very successful. And Spielberg said that he would do it as long as it centered around the USS Indianapolis, which, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, was a very focal point um, of the wily fisherman Quentin, played by, again, Robert Shaw, and that infamous monologue, which he, um, he describes... Uh, that terrible event with the U.S. Indianapolis, USS Indianapolis, um, and being in the shark-infected waters. What was really interesting is that monologue uh, that was penned by John Millis. I hope I'm saying that right, Millis. Uh, when he dictated that particular speech over the phone. Now, he is also the individual, John is also the individual who uh, penned Apocalypse Now, uh, starring Marlon Brando, and um, Martin Sheen was in Apocalypse Now. Um, what's really eerie about this um, event that was penned by John is that he pretty much uh, told the story uh, in, in detail. The only one slip-up um, is when um, Quentin provides the wrong date. It was actually on July 30th, of, uh, two, uh, 1945, and he states it as June 29th, uh, 1945, when, when everything occurred. Uh, but what was really interesting is that, that, that they pretty much got the story right uh, except for that one uh, one uh, detail, and that was with the dates uh, in terms of that. Now, with Steven Spielberg, we, we know that he has a, I won't say a fascination, but um, he's not afraid to tackle um, some of the stories with World War II. If you look back on his career, he had uh, 1941, Emperor of the Sun, Saving Private Ryan, Schindler's List, all focused on World War II. So I think it would be uh, easy to understand his fascination, plus it, it, it was a great story uh, in terms of that. However, for us, uh, Universal uh, didn't want to really um, sink a ton of money into a guy that really only had Jaws, uh, and who knew Steven Spielberg was going to develop into the individual that he is um, today and really um, a guru when it comes to, to, to films um, in terms of that. Well, it's also really interesting is um, the film was going to start off showing that it got hit and then it was going to have the rest of the film would play as basically a survivor 
horror picture because you can imagine them floating in the ocean of the Pacific for five days and the horrible situation that they were in uh, in uh, shark infected waters. There was injury, so there was blood, and it was just one of those uh, terrible, terrible uh, ordeals where men were trying to do anything and everything that they could to stay alive while they were floating both in and out of lifeboats uh, in the ocean, again, trying to uh, keep themselves from being scorched with the sun, but at the same time, trying not to be attacked uh, by sharks in terms of that. So, very um, kind of interesting um, that uh, I think we would have, uh, or at least I would have enjoyed seeing that as a Jaws 2 um, but um, it wasn't meant to be. And who knows, maybe uh, Steven Spielberg will eventually come back and revisit the U.S. Indianapolis with his own version of that. But today we're, we want to get focused back on the USS Indianapolis Men of Courage uh, that was released in 2016 starring Nicolas Cage. And that is what we're, we're talking about. Um, some, some fun little facts or some trivia regarding um, the USS Indianapolis Men of Courage. Um, I don't think I really told you who was in this. Obviously, uh, Nicholas Cage, and he is um, portraying Captain Charles B. McVeigh. And Tom Sizemore is also in this. Uh, Thomas Jane, Matt Lantern, uh, Brian Presley, um, and um, Cody Walker. And we'll uh, get to him in just a minute uh, in terms of who he is, Cody Walker. But what's really interesting is that Matt Lanter's grandfather was a survivor of the U.S. Indianapolis, and in the film, uh, Lanter wears his grandfather's dog tags as a, a little tribute and memorial to his grandfather. Uh, while the film depicts, the description says that 300 men were stranded, uh, again, the actual number uh, was a little over 1,100, almost 1,200 um, individuals, 879 of those would die in the water from injuries related to the torpedo attack, um, from the sinking, from sharks, and from just other exposures. Um, in terms of that, again, I mentioned there was 317 actual survivors of the USS Indianapolis. Uh, scenes set on the U.S. Indianapolis, uh, obviously the ship was destroyed, was filmed aboard the USS Alabama. Uh, The USS Alabama was docked in Mobile Bay in Mobile, Alabama. And the same battleship, the U.S. Alabama, was used to film Under Siege, which was Steven Seagal back in 1992. So a little interesting in terms of that. Um, The wreckage of the U.S. Indianapolis uh, was found on the 19th of August, 2017, in the Philippines, three and a half miles below the surface by Paul Allen and his crew. And you, if you know who Paul Allen um, was, he has since passed, but he was the co-founder of Microsoft along with Bill Gates. And so he was a, a, a big explorer and spent a lot of his money going out uh, finding lost uh, artifacts um, from history. Um, we, we talked um, a little bit about Quentin. Um, and talks about the the shipwreck. Um, Jaws was released back in 1975, and um, he really talks about those five days in the water before being rescued. And, and as I mentioned early on, in my personal opinion, I, I think that's one of the more um, famous scenes uh, that really brings the USS Indianapolis to light. Uh, and it's back in Jaws in 75. Uh, now, the film is based on the book In Harm's Way, The Sinking of the USS Indianapolis, and the Extraordinary Story of Its Survivors by uh, Doug Stanton. The events depict happen about three weeks before the end of World War II, and it should not be confused with the film In Harm's Way, uh, which was uh, released in 1965, uh, which was the setting or the beginning of World War II. Uh, so we don't want to make sure we want to make sure we don't get those um, um, confused. 
Uh, we talked about how the U.S. Indianapolis was discovered on, in August of 2017, and that was some 72 years after it was uh, it had sank. And what was interesting back in August of 2017, we still had 19 of the 317 survivors uh, still living. So 19 uh, crew members from that um, terrible event uh, were, were still alive um, in terms of that. Okay. Uh, Captain McVeigh, who was uh, being portrayed by Nicolas Cage, he commanded the uh, Indianapolis for precisely 254 days. Uh, he started on November the 18th, 1944, and ran through July 30th, 1945, um, in terms of that. Uh, so, uh, again, a little bit of history in terms of that. Um, now, I told you that uh, Nicolas Cage is in this film, but also uh, Thomas Jan. Uh, both of those were um, both of those actors were actually married um, to Patricia Arquette. Uh, Cage and Arquette were married from 1995 to 2001, and Jane and Arquette were married from 2006 through uh, 2011. Uh, this is the second time that the museum battleship USS Alabama stood in for the Indianapolis. Uh, the first time was the Mission of the Shark, the saga of the USS Indianapolis, uh, which was released back in 1991. Now, I told you that Cody Walker uh, was in this film. Um, this is his acting debut. Uh, he uh, had previously been a body double and a stand-in for his older brother, Paul Walker, in the Fu uh, Fast and the Furious uh, saga Um Furious 7, which was released in 2015, and you'll remember that uh, Paul Walker had died uh, before the finishing, uh, uh, the film had been finished, film, being filmed, and he stood in as, uh, Cody stood in for his brother Paul as a body double um, in that, um, in, in, in that, um, in that film. Um, this is Nicolas Cage's second movie with Thomas Jane. Uh, the first was Face Off back in 1997. Uh, this is Thomas Jane's second starring role in a film involving sharks. The first was uh, Deep Blue Sea back in 1999. And Nicolas Cage and Tom Sizemore, this is their second film together. Uh, the first was Bringing Out the Dead back in 1999. Um, in terms of that... Uh, Oh, and uh, Thomas, uh, excuse me, and Nicholas Cage and James Ramirez co-starred 32 years earlier in the 1984 The Cotton Club uh, movie. So, again, just some uh, fun little facts, some trivia before we really dive into the USS Indianapolis Men of Courage. And uh, again, like I said, I hope everybody um, has a chance to. Um, read a little bit about the history of the U.S. Indianapolis, and it's really a fascinating story. Uh, like I said, though, this particular movie kind of blurs historical facts uh, with Hollywood and trying to um, bring the two together. And we'll give Hollywood a little bit of uh, poetic license, if you will, um, on this film, just because it's really a, a, a very... Um, Kind of a sad, dark um, movie. Um, like I said, having um, sailors literally in the Pacific Ocean being surrounded by um, sharks. And uh, they spent five terrible days trying to cling on to life um, after um, being attacked by the Japanese. And, and it's really a survival story um, in terms of that. Okay, um, so let's just go ahead and jump into to the movie. Um, the USS Indianapolis Men of Courage um, is a 2016 American war disaster film directed by Mario Van Pebbles. It was also written by Cam Cannon and Richard Rodeo Del Castro. And it's based, like I said, largely on a true story of the loss of the ship of the same name in the closing stages of World War II. Um, again, um, principal photography began on June the 19th of 2015 in Mobile, Alabama, 
and it used the U.S. Alabama as um, the U.S.S. Indianapolis in terms of that. Uh, the film premiered in the Philippines on August the 24th, 2016. It was released as a digital rental on iTunes and on Amazon in the United States on October the 14th, 2016, and in limited theaters uh, during the Veterans Day uh, weekend. And as I mentioned earlier, it cost approximately $40 million to make, but it only made $1.6 million at the box office. Um, which was um, kind of sad based on a, um, a story that needs to be told. So what is the plot? What, what is the USS Indianapolis Men Courage all about? I've kind of really hinted around about it, but in 1945, the Portland-class heavy cruiser, the USS Indianapolis, which was commanded by Captain Charles McVeigh, played by Nicolas Cage, uh, they are tasked to deliver parts of the atomic bomb that would later be used to bomb Hiroshima during the ending of World War II. While they're patrolling in the um, uh, Philippine Sea on July 30th, 1945, the ship is then torpedoed and sunk by the Imperial Japanese Naval Navy submarine I-58, taking 300 crewmen with it to the bottom of the uh, Philippine Sea, while the rest climbed out of the ship and were left stranded, stranded at sea for five days without food and water in a shark-infested environment. Um, like I said uh, earlier, there was a roughly 1,000, uh, 100, almost 1,200 uh, crewmen on there, and only 317 uh, individuals survived. So here we are, we have um, individuals that are stranded in um, shark-infested waters without food and without water. And you might say, well, there's a whole ocean there, but you got to remember that seawater, it also has uh, damage. Uh, what I mean by damage, good, it, it's also going to have um, um, fuel from from the battleship it's also going to have their human waste i mean you've got individuals just in this area there's blood uh there's all kinds of different things there and so <clears throat> if you know if you drink salt water what's that going to do it's going to dehydrate you oh and we didn't even really talk about the sun so here they are clean on in the middle of uh july in the middle of the ocean um with nothing to eat nothing to drink they're floating, they have sharks to worry about, and then during the day, they also have uh, the sun beating down on them. So here we are with five days with really no hope. Most of the remaining crewmen were eaten by sharks or would die from the salt water poisoning by drinking uh, the seawater, uh, which also caused some of those injuries to die from uh, infectious wounds. So, I mean, these these individuals just had a lot of things going um, um, going against them. And it's amazing that 317 individuals actually were able to survive. Uh, some of the uh, sailors swam off uh, from their groups from, hallucination, from hallucinating, um, thinking that they could see a distant island uh, that didn't exist. Uh, unfortunately, those individuals were never seen again. Uh, on the fifth day, the surviving crew were rescued by an airplane pilot who spotted them by chance and called for a rescue. Uh, as I mentioned, only 317 survived the disaster, looking for a scapegoat for their own gross negligence. The U.S. Navy court martialed and convicts Captain Mc McVeigh, who is again played by Nicolas Cage, for hazard hazarding his ship by failing to zigzag. And one of the things that um, um, during World War II, what they did, what they wanted to do was zigzag. And so it was um, harder for the enemy to have a direct line. So it's like anything else. If you're going from point A to point B, the quickest way to get there is in a straight line. But it also would cause a straight line. You would be easy to be a target. But if you zigzagged back and forth, it made it um, a little bit harder uh, for somebody to uh, 
um, a torpedo you. Not saying it was impossible, not saying that it, it didn't happen and it couldn't happen, but it just made it um, a little bit tougher, and that was protocol of the day. Um, despite the overwhelming evidence supporting McVeigh, such as even having the former captain of the U- UN's I-58 submarine to testify for the trial, which proved uh, that McVeigh was not at fault, it ends um, not very good for McVeigh, even though the the evidence was against, or actually supporting him, basically, um, unfortunately, and a lot of times, they needed a victim. And as the captain, and as the saying goes, captain goes down with the ship, and in a sense, he did. What's um, really sad is the... Um, Basically, we, we find that the, at the end, uh, Captain McVeigh, Nicholas Cage's um, uh, character, finally commits suicide years after the tragedy, after being harassed and tormented with phone calls and from mail from angry and grief, grief, grief-stricken relatives of the deceased crew members, as well as the media, mostly in the form of newspaper, which place all the blame squarely on him and because of the ship sinking. Um, in the movie's postscript, though, we show, um, it shows that President Clinton exonerates Captain McVeigh for all charges on October the 30th, um, and uh, I'm sorry, for all the charges on October the 30th, two, in 2000. So, some 60, some years later, 50, 60, some years later, uh, President Clinton exonerates Captain McVeigh, um, in terms of, and so... Basically, it was that pressure that got to him, and, and that's how the, the the film really ends. Is that um, Captain McVeigh just just really couldn't take the 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 torture, if you will. I hope I can say it that way um, from from the harassment, and it was just a terrible thing. I mean, I, I can't imagine um, being in the captain's position, but I cannot also imagine being one of the loved ones that uh, lost a, um, a husband or a father um, or a brother in this event uh, or a son. And I could see both sides um, of this. And, and like I said, uh, Captain McVeigh just really couldn't take the pressure and unfortunately uh, commit suicide um, from, from the harassment, for lack of a better word, uh, in, in terms of that. Now, what's interesting, there's always a subplot uh, in, in films like this. I shouldn't say always, but a lot of times. And basically, we have two, um, excuse me, two childhood friends, uh, Indianapolis diver um, Brian Bam uh, Smithwicks and a crew member, Mike uh, Delanto. Long story short, both of these individuals fall in love with the same woman without the other knowing. So both of them are in love with the same woman. Neither one of them really knows it. Uh, DeAnto purchased an engagement ring before the trip, and he is going to propose. um, And um, who tells... Yeah, uh, the the trip... uh, um, Basically, long story short, again, the two of them get into it, a brawl uh, involving two of the crewmen. So the, the Antio loses a ring, and one of the other crew members, Avon, Alvin, excuse me, uh, steals it after the ship is destroyed. Smithwick and the Antio spend the next few days in the sea with the rest of the crew, uh, where the Antio succumbs to massive lake injuries received in a shark attack, and Smith. Smithwith is given the engagement ring by Alvin. Uh, band proposals to uh, initials Antonio, excuse me, fiance Claire, uh, to help raise their child, and she accepts their proposal. Uh, while the credit rolls, two Navy uh, sailors reencount the sharks in the water, and the real rescue footage is shown along with many still shots. Uh, the lost sailors um, in the in, in the Pacific Ocean at that day. Um, just uh, again, just a, a really terrible, um, terrible um, situation based on a true true story and event. So, 
The question then becomes uh, Nicolas Cage um, and his performance in the USS Indianapolis. I I thought he was okay. I mean, I would say that, it, uh, like I've said in so many of these, it wasn't his best, but I wouldn't say it was his worst. I would, on a scale of one to one to ten, I'm a little bit more down the middle. I would lean towards um, a six, maybe even a six and a half out of a ten in terms of that. Uh, just because, um, well, I'm a history buff and, and, and I really love those types of um, uh, movies. And so I, I, I would give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, like I said, though, it wasn't um, one of his worst performance um, by no means, but it wasn't um, uh, one of his best either. I, so I'm going to go somewhere between a six, six and a half in, in terms of that. Um, like I said, um, Others with Rotten Tomato um, only gave it a 17, but again, that was based only on 11 uh, reviews. I, again, I, I stick by my earlier comments regarding the US, USS Indianapolis in the sense that uh, the USS Indianapolis is one of those historical events that's out there, but a lot of people... Um, just, just don't know the story. If it wasn't for uh, the, the the movie Jaws in 1975, I think even fewer people would would understand or have uh, any historical reference regarding uh, the USS Indianapolis. In terms of that, um, we see that on February the fifth, uh, 2015, uh, Nicholas Cage was set to play the lead role of Captain McVeigh in the in in the film. Um, we see that Matt Lanter was set um, on April the 1st, 2015 to play U.S. Navy diver uh, Chief Petty Officer Brian Bam Smithwick. Um, Lanter revealed to the producers after his audition that his grandfather, Kinley Lantern, was a signalman on the Indianapolis. Uh, furthermore, Lantern's father, Joe Lantern, is a chairman of the Second Watch, an organization of survivors and their families. Uh, Joe Lantern and his co-chair, Mario Bullard, uh, stayed in contact with the producers during, during pre-production and were welcomed to the set during photography. Uh, then on May the 13th, 2015, uh, it was revealed that Tom Sizemore, Jane, Thomas Jane, and Brian Presley would also join the cast for the film um, in terms of that. Um, on July the 15th, 2015, Cody Walker uh, was cast in the film to play one of the, the crewmen aboard the ship. And like I said, that was his uh, acting debut in terms of that. Um, see here, uh, principal photography on the film began on June the 19th, 2015 in Mobile, Alabama with many, many of the scenes shot aboard the battleship USS Alabama, which I discussed earlier, that was to um, take place or be a, uh, um, um, to be in place of the Indianapolis. Uh, filming also took place in San Francisco and over in Japan, uh, but, but the producers later opted to double Mobile for both San Francisco and Japan um, in terms of that. And then on June the 27th, 2015, fil filming was underway in Orange Beach um, in terms of that for the film. After filming on July the 14th in downtown Mobile, Cage, uh, Nicholas Cage met a real Navy veteran named Richard Stevens on a beach um, at Penevel Square. Stevens was one of the survivors of the uh, ship USS Indianapolis. So um, Cage... And Stevens had a long talk about the disaster, and um, I'm, I'm sure uh, got a much deeper appreciation for the story and the events that uh, uh, those brave individuals uh, went through. Again, what a terrible tragedy um, in, in history, and I, I just can't imagine what it would have been like floating in the ocean for five days um, with no food, with no water, no protection from the sun. Oh, and by the way, I'm surrounded by uh, sharks that uh, uh, want to um, want to eat me uh, because of everybody's injuries and the blood, um, et cetera, et cetera, in, in terms of that. So, 
Um, overall, like I said, I, I, personally, I'm going to give this film a six out of a ten. Um, one, just because um, I'm a little partial to history, uh, but at the same time, I think it's it, it's a great story to tell. One thing I'm not too keen on is, but I understand why people do it. I understand why Hollywood does it is to kind of bring the the love story in the mix. Um, I get it. It sells tickets. Um, it's something that that um, they they want. They need. I get that. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it is what it is in terms of that. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to this episode of The Complete Works. Uh, We were discussing the film, The USS Indianapolis, Men of Courage, starring Nicolas Cage, um, that was released in 2016. You can find out more of my work on film-book.com. You can search my name, Doug Hens, or you can search The Complete Works. You can find me on Twitter at HessDoug14. And we thank you for listening. We encourage you, if you like what you've heard, to subscribe um, so we can have the um, podcast sent to you directly. And again, if you um, um, have any comments, you feel free to email us at podcast at film-book.com. Again, that's podcast at film-book.com. In the subject line, you can put in the complete works. You can put in the USS Indianapolis Men of Courage or any of the other films that we're um, we're talking about. Again, we strongly encourage you to hit the subscription uh, button. And until next week on the complete works, have a great week, everyone, and we'll talk to you next week. That the audience was more willing to give um, uh, the praise to the to the actor or actresses uh, in the movie but was a little um, standoffish when it came to the actual film in, in, in terms of that. Um, the audience polled by Cine, uh, um, score, Cinema Score gave the film an average grade of A on an A plus to an F. Um, however, um, Stone works best when it's just uh, Edward and the three journalists in the hotel room sweating it out because they were deciding what they were going to release, when they were going to release it, etc. in terms of that. But uh, for the actual... Basically, for the actual material of the film, I think a lot of people, like I said, were, were just a little standoffish or a little squeamish. Now, let's fast forward to 2019, and with the current political um, climate that is out there, I'm not so sure that this film wouldn't get a... Uh, a much stronger praise uh, from some of the critics when you're looking at the actual material, not the acting, but the message that's there. Uh, I think you'd probably have things a little bit different today in 2019 versus 2016, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, And again, like I said, I don't want to make this about politics. This is not the the podcast for, for that. And if you're looking for that, there's there's other podcasts for you to uh, to join. I just want to stay with the uh, entertainment value when it comes to with movies and Nicolas Cage or the complete works in general of whoever that we're talking about, an actor, actress, director, composer, etc. And um, let you, the audience, come up with your own um, thoughts and um, and take on that. Okay. Well, that uh, wraps up another edition of The Complete Works. If you have listened to this uh, podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please, we encourage you to rate and review this episode. If you're listening to this podcast on the YouTube channel, uh, Film Book Podcast, please like us, our video, and subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. And we just ask that you tune in next time when we review and analyze the next uh, Nicholas uh, Cage film. We want to thank you for listening. And uh, again, if you like what you hear, please hit subscribe so we can have additions, uh, future editions of the podcast. The complete work sent directly to you. Love to hear from you as well. Send us an email uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, or concerns. And uh, you can do that. Um, 
at podcast at film-book.com. And in the subject line, put in the complete works, Snowden, or any of the other movie, or yeah, other movies that we have been reviewing. And we hope to um, see you next time. So again, thanks for listening to the complete works. This has been an uh, episode on Nicolas Cage. And the movie that we reviewed for Nicolas Cage was Snowden. So until next time, take care.